upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Okay. 3 a.m. Because they knew I was going to try to bring the items back one by one. Thank oh my God, God one. you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? This is our job, Peggy. We, we got to do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? I think... We should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. One sec, one sec. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. One second, okay? Because I didn't actually finish reading this yet. Is this the fake one or the the original one? The disease is a Caucasian male, age 18. When you're ready, shut the music off. Oh my god, they've been listening to this country music for this long. The cause of death is established to be drowning as shown by the signs of asphyxiation. Abrasions were found on the knuckles, likely from getting into fights in the past. Matches with known history of the deceased being aggressive. No other injuries were observed, and from the coroner's opinion, there is no evidence of foul play. Additionally, the preliminary toxicology report indicates that the deceased had a high level of alcohol in their blood. It is of the coroner's opinion that the deceased went swimming while intoxicated, resulting in his drowning. Yeah, so okay, this is... They made Virginia do... Another one. Hopefully that security system is not something we need to know. When you're ready, shut the music off. Yes, Peggy, the keyword being when I'm ready. Have you ever let me be ready? Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? They're still there. The frat bros. <laughs> Plunker! It's Goose! Goose! Goose, 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 Goose! Where are you? Get your ass here! The party has moved! Oh, cool. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's pretty cool. Though. Oh, she's old. Dude, I can't she tell by her voice. Her a liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected her. Of course, we're not drinking anymore. We're staying sharp in case that whistling turd turns back up. The old lady might need our help. Of course, man. Of course. Hey, could you put me on with the old lady? No. To check if it's cool for me to drop by. <laughs> oh, there's that goose respect we love. <laughs> I'll grab her now. Uh, hello? Is this goose? <clears throat> hey, uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm, I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. I'm sorry, but we, we have a different problem today. She was the, the initial lady who we found the name Clive from. Sorry to hear that, but listen, hey, we need to talk. What about? We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after we're on you. on air. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. I don't think so. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what. But 
We found them, and we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. I'll just say that for now. I, I mean, we can't cast judgment on the person, the only person who has information to be giving us right now. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. That's it? So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Who even is... Well, George. we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. Alright, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. This is tense. Aha. Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. My forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life. I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. If we didn't save her, then I guess we wouldn't be able to ask her anything, huh? Well, start with a carrot. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Ah, uh, you got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I could tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. You're lying. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. I don't want to... Mm. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. <laughs> of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? 
sure. I understand. But the rent just kept going up. He said he'd stop if... What? I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. We didn't well, get any folks, information. if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Already? The river? We know the reservoir is here. The river? There's a ravine? Hit the button. We have a caller. Yes, yes. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really Brian, blue with everything not the time. happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. Oh, God. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Starting at your- You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! But damn it, Peggy, this is your fault! My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Ugh. Don't worry, we've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? I recognize this voice the first word he said, okay? We gotta start recognizing. Do some AI voice recognition or whatever, okay? I, I Oh, in 87. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> I have a caller waiting. Just feels a little bit like, oh, I'm so worried about everything now. And then Brian Ponty comes out of nowhere. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. Caller. Are you okay? <sighs> oh. Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest. Forrest? Are you okay? No. <sighs> I'm not okay. <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry. Sorry. That was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Hey, this guy really is so insensitive towards his fellow citizens. People are calling in using this as 911 and you're calling in about pizza? Enough, man, enough! Call waiting. Better take it. They might need our help. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's... All I'm gonna say about that. Mm, moving along. I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream. With me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Uh... Yeah! Yeah, we had a deal. You were gonna give us information. I totally forgot about that. But okay. 
Are you in danger? I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. What? Did you anticipate that I'll find all that janitor stuff? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system oh. has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. These security systems, they don't have keys. Uh, ask a neighbor for help first. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment. That's a train. Like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Sorry, so the trailer park, she's at Woodside Apartments. But we heard a train just now. We heard a train just now. That's the yellow line, isn't it? Is she lying? Well, well let's see. No, she needs our help. And there was a dog. Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Listen, I can't get any... The whistling man. He's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Voice, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. I... It's that... That paper, the instruction manual that we had downstairs. Do we have time to get it, though? Wait. I took a quick picture of it on my phone. I'm just gonna quickly review it. I only took a picture of the codes, though. Is it Starling Security Alarm? What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says... Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad... And it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Yeah, 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 I, I got it, I got it. Uh, maintenance alarm entry. But then, they would have changed it already, wouldn't they have? Uh... Starling Security 4000, huh? Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Don into her apartment. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, one last goodbye. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone... I did think it was weird, but you're almost saying like she's the killer. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starlink 4000. There were dogs, there were neighbors playing music, and there, most importantly, there was a train going by in the beginning. Like, she's just not near any train tracks, right? That's weird. 
Can I possibly get any more just from, just from thinking about this? Can I put this elsewhere? It's useless. Oh no, that looks ugly. Put this oh, come on! I just need you to stop blocking everything. Jazz Studio. Oh, that looks ugly too. Oh, ah, it's a mess. Everything is a mess. Train station. Right, right. The yellow dotted line is the train station. She was not. Peggy seemed to be implying that maybe she wants to get inside Woodside Apartment, so maybe we shouldn't be giving the code. I don't know about this. I hate coming down here. Have things changed? I don't know. Clive hasn't even been doing his damn job. So we had it right here. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Do you think we need to bring this one for now? This was Virginia's thing. Maybe if I come back down here again, but yeah, we talked to her about it. She was not willing to say too much more, but there was a guy who told her to not report where he actually, where she actually found the body. Which sounds pretty damn suspicious to me. It seems to all, because it's a small town, it's revolving... I need you to close and not scare me later. The way it does that slow thing, jeez. It's a small town and everyone involved seems to be from... Uh, same age-ish? Same high school? Do we have that many rats around here? That's kind of a problem. Well, we have it here, although I don't know if I... Something was weird. We better stay on our toes. Put this away for now. You ready? I'm not sure where the river is, though. This must be all connected in some way. I can't tell how old people are from their voice necessarily, so I can't be like, okay, this person sounds like they're in their, I don't know, 40s, so they might be a high schooler back in the day. It's just not clear. Wait, I didn't bring the receipt here for the security system. Should we go get it? Oh, uh, let's, just in case. Because there were like little handwritten notes and everything. Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Right, right! Unable to install! They, they didn't even have it installed! Oh my god, I nearly... <gasps> That's really weird. Bring both of these back. This will go here. Where was the Humpty Dumpty again? I, uh, it's right there. We're good. So now we, um, Peggy, do you want to talk a little bit? Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Uh, do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... He has a dog. When we called Dawn, there was a dog barking, and there was Train, and then he was playing David... David Scopo? Oh, I don't remember if Roller Ricky mentioned that before. Maybe he... What? Is she trying to kill him? If she's the whistling man. That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Wouldn't hurt, right? Patching you through, just to make sure he's okay. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. 
Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Dawn. I'll take care of this one way or another. The ruler ring. Okay, if you say so. Line one, whenever you're ready. I just want to check the location of the roller rink. Is it next to the train? It is. It is. It's right next to the train. There's a dog because Ricky owns a dog. And then the music because he likes the music. That's suspicious. Done. Are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I've been so afraid. What's the code to the gate? It's 191519. Yeah. Yeah. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Son of a bitch. Ah! Is she? She's the whistling man. I don't know yet, but she's definitely fishy. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! Yeah! Don't ever come back here again! Ricky's okay. I'm calling the cops! Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. Yeah. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. Yeah. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's Thanks, a man. done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what... Wow! ...just happened. We were so close. I was so close to going back. I just... And then I was like, oh, what about the receipt? See, this is why we don't want to touch stuff before it becomes relevant. Because sometimes you miss the other things that you were supposed to look at. But thankfully, we were okay. Dawn is the whistling man. So now I'm thinking... Did she want me to go outside? Well... Hmm... What song should I play? I would explain how we saw, like, when we first went outside, we saw someone who looked like the Whistling Man. They were staring at us, and then maybe... She wanted to frame Clive as being the killer, and that's why we found... It. Cause she... She is Clive's employer, maybe? I know they say Whistling Man, but it really... Nobody ever said it was a man. Hey, play something! So, the whistling man is a woman? <laughs> I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. At some point, everything fell down. I hadn't realized. That's okay. Leave it in the corner. Thank you. You've all been excellent items. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Yep. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. 
If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. The calls are rolling in, and yet nothing is becoming clearer. If Dawn... Oh! Maisie Cartwright! Call her on line one. Holy... Wow! Okay. I didn't even see it until now. Wow, okay, so it's Maisie Cartwright then. Right? Because Humpty Dumpty, Dawn, Henry, Anne... She's using her acting name, her like the name of her character... Back in the high school play. I knew this was important. You could read it. Therefore, it's important. We have a call waiting. Also, it said George Barrow on it. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. The ambulance is broken. 25. Hold up, hold up. Uh, we need to... <sighs> You need to tell us what happened. Somebody's been stabbed? Can, can you tell me what happened? We'd been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him! They went back to where it all began. Well, actually, it didn't begin at the reservoir. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know! They had a mask and wore all black? That's all I know! Please, we need help here! I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, It's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. But what are we going to do about it, though? Like, we can get the info, but what are we going to do about this person? It doesn't even matter where the ambulance is. Around the hospital, it should be. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do about this. The location of hurt. Wait, gather more info for saving him, or gather more info for our investigation? Because if it's the first one, then it would be this the second question. Mm, we, should, we should try to help him. Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh god, I'm sorry, but the ambulance is... well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Do you think you can handle that? Let me... Okay, maybe we should grab like a pen and paper and write down the instructions for... T t first aid? 
We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Oh, thank you, clean Peggy. She's taking notes. When slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't pull it don't out. Don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, wait, wait, wait. We need to get him comfortable. And then stop the bleeding. Pressure. Apply pressure. And, uh... <laughs> Don't pull the thing out. Don't pull the thing out. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter. We gotta keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Before the memory goes, let's go. Hello? Oh, oh, Forrest, are you there? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything uh, you can wriggling tie around him. it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Some cloths on the hood of the car. And what else? I guess I've got my jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, the laundry is dirty, right? Your jacket, the cleaning... Ra oh, dear. I would use the rags. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. They're cleaning rags. They're not clean rags. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Yes. Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. She wouldn't ask if it You're wasn't important. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. Oh wait. Jason, please be okay. Yes, Peggy? What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Someone who can drive. Do you have any suggestions? Can she drive? She has a garage. They're in the garage right now. Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. You! Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a... 
producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Like, how do we get in Reggie's office? <sighs> it's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, no. what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. <laughs> anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. Where even is Reggie's office? Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Wow, we're so fancy. We have this fancy tech and you can't come out. You can't come out, huh? Reggie's office unlocked. Where is Reggie's office? I don't know, actually. Is there another door here? No. Is it behind the receptionist? There were a few doors there that we hadn't opened yet. Like this one. Private. Okay. What was that crap? Looks like I need a four digit code. Oh, shoot. Very important date. For Re <laughs> He puts the freaking note right next to the thing. All right, Reggie. Okay, Reggie! Reggie has the first aid certificate. Pretty recent, too. It's from last month. That's... that's good. Can we get Reggie himself to come in? Where is Reggie anyway? I, we need someone else to hold down the fort. The freaking radio station is the police now. And there's only two employees trying to do stuff. Alien sightings number 75, UFO over park. No! No! Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. <laughs> oh, there is the disc. We don't know if it's the right one. Ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Did she borrow some of your horror things? Chilabacabras. Taste of Mexico. He drank two sodas. That just seems kind of unhealthy. Best boss. Is he really now? Another- we're so in love with these thingies. To be fair, they are kind of cool. But he won't let that one move. That one's all tied up together. Axe forever. Need to write pitch document. Good title. Bring back original protag and villain. Oh, are you like a writer? In his spare time? Okay, well, I think we gotta probably put in that floppy first. Oh, the intercom. I want to believe. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? 
I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries, we still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I'd recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Yeah, I don't think none of these are touchable. Could this be it? Deep cuts, top secret. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in as a final girl's boyfriend? Protagonist is college student Megan, surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. Amplifies the divide between her and the pizza killer. <laughs> Takes place on... Is that July 11? Oh, or November 7th. Very important date for the town. Great goose gathering, event where a large number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. Try to link this into the greater story. Need to kill off Megan's support network throughout the movie, like Acts 3, but even scarier. Maybe partner with Ponty's Pizza for the launch? January... 10? Oh, one out of the ten orders. Just receive a pizza cutter and tickets to the movie. This is it. There's only one page on this floppy disk. 11... Ooh, 7? Nice. Oh my goodness. Okay, take it one at a time. But we know Reggie has the first aid already. We have to be very careful about which ones we've already seen, okay? This is gonna get easy to mix up soon. That was something, right? I still have no idea whenever we hear noises. Is it someone trying to get me? I can't read this anymore. I, I can't, I can't. Peggy. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. Got it. I'll take another look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Is someone outside the window? Do they know I'm in the office right now? God, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Nancy Drive. We gotta look at... John Hedges, newsreader. John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send everyone regardless. Okay, so he doesn't have the course, but he is definitely qualified. He has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? Spoke to John again about eating the free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he'd stop, but he said that the last three times too. Is it un-American to reprimand a war vet? Oh, this is John! He was making fun of... Brad. Dude, this guy lives on Nancy Drive! 14 Nancy Drive! This guy is on Nancy Drive, directly! Nancy Drive could be a long street, to be fair. I think we have our guy already. This is- it's John. Okay, we're gonna... I'm gonna put this one here. Who else do we got? Brad? Thirty-one acts down lane. When I hired him, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places and a diner. What's the point? But I told them we can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown or Henderson. Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after-work meetings sometime. I've always wanted to learn more about food. Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth-to-mouth -mouth with Barbara, and Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. Your... Ugh. Brad, Axe Down Lane. Axe Down Lane is actually pretty close by too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's the next street over. Uh, but he wasn't paying attention during first aid, so I think we can write him off. Yeah. Let's 
so many. I think we got it's John. John. Hey Peggy, I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. <laughs> we already know I can't. Don't waste time. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. I've never seen someone gel with everybody as quickly as Peggy has. Her, Karen, and Barbara have really become a little family already. Maybe we need to run the station on girl power. Hopefully it's cheaper than electric. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls on the screen. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training because of their training sessions. Their collection of cocktail parasols grows after each session. Why are they doing training sessions at a bar? Yeah, so apparently it looks like these, the, the little umbrellas that we saw are also commonly on cocktails. I see them all on desserts more, but I guess that's the context we have here. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, <laughs> I'm a lone wolf type. Forrest, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. We have a man literally dying <laughs> on the line, and you're more interested in you. You're right, I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. Aw, uh, that won't affect things, right? Because I I'm, I'm actually haven't even been looking at the names. I've just been putting them in. Well, I mean, might as well. Forrest Nash. I can't believe we actually got the Forrest Nash here in Gallows Creek. His motivation may be low, his demands are a bit beyond our means, and is currently blacklisted from any reputable station. But honestly, we don't have a reputation to lose. Forrest isn't really integrating with the team. Seems to have this lone wolf thing going on. Heard him call Jeannie, Janie, Janine, and Brenda in his first week. Hopefully this changes when he gets settled. I've paired Forrest with Peggy for his show. They seem to have developed a relationship of sorts pretty quickly, which is good, because we sure don't have the show budget to pair him with Karen. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I haven't even been looking at the names. It's- I'm pretty sure it's John, but- Karen? Karen didn't go to first aid. We know this. Barbara. Well, Barbara could be? But she's not available, is she? Barbara's really getting on well with all the staff here. Everybody gave her great feedback at our last review. Get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad. Call it a hunch. Oh, but she didn't pay attention at first aid. Barbara got another cat recently. She must have had at least five now. Daisy, Murphy, Penelope, Freddy, and Lord Winston. I'll need to monitor productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of the team. <laughs> uh, the photos we saw. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for my new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the center of the Earth set to hatch on February 30th is a great idea. Why else would we avoid having a February 30th? You are absolutely right, Reggie. You, your calling is a writer. It's John. It's John. Karen Lawson. Oh, shoot. Karen is also on Nancy. Nancy Drive. Wait, I, have, I didn't even look at... Barbara's address. Karen really stepped up her duties in recent months. She has fully taken on Hamish's show alongside the Timberline twins ever since Wes left us. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. Karen started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They are even doing team building training getaways to improve efficiency. Update. I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategically timed. They've now both missed Secret Santa, first aid training, and the Teddy Gallus Jr. station visit. Okay, well, I, uh, I'm pretty sure it's John. It's John. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up! Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Oh god. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. We have to do it here! Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seemed to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry! Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I... I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate legs. So that the blood flows to the vital organs. Casey, 
I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Don't replace it. Put it on. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. Should I get back to my station? Can I? Sorry, sorry. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. But please, I, I can't give him what he needs. Please send help. I can't lose him. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? John Hedges? His name is... John Hedges. Brad and Barbara weren't paying attention. Karen didn't even go. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five, four, two, zero, seven, three, five. Calling now. Let's help you pick. Uh, who the hell is this calling me at? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not. It kidding. doesn't matter. Someone's man hurt. going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. Oh, the they were gonna quiz is me. still in his leg, Ooh. and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. He got there. That was fast. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. 
And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Oh, that was stressful. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Oh, yeah. I think I'll take a tape with me. I'm pretty sure there was somebody banging on the window earlier. And even earlier, like when we were around the genie station, I don't know what that noise was though. Is it a sign of me going crazy? It may very well be. Why is it so red outside? Lord. Is tonight over yet? I There's only so much more of this I can take. I'm just gonna grab the... How to jumpstart a car from here again. <laughs> I want all the relevant stuff. Time for some music. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is a, the backside of this was the. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, I'm tired. I'm so tired. Is there one that we haven't played yet? Have we played this one? This is "I'm Coming to Getcha" by Vice. One of the best tunes this year. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Okay, so I'll just never give you a buzz then, right? Oh, all right. 